Hey hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio. In this video we're going to take a look at how to render widgets to an image and then store that image onto Firebase. We will be creating a simple app like this in which when I click on the share button you can see a loading sign here and when the loading completes we can go to Firestore and refresh the link and we have an image here and when I click on the image you can see that the image is stored on Firebase. This can be quite useful in cases if you're creating an image filter app and you have to save the final image created by the user. Or this can also be useful in an e-commerce app where the payment is made and you wish to save the final receipt and share that receipt to the other user. So let's get started. So right now I'm in a simple app in which I just have the UI ready. In the UI I have this my home page which is a stateful widget and in this I have a scaffold and in the scaffolds I have the center as the body which contains a column which further contains a container. And I've given some width and height to the container. The container further contains a stack in which the first child is of the image, that is the confetti you can see right here. So the second child of this stack is this column, and in this column I have all these details. So the first child of this column is this image, and other than this image, I do have some text widgets that can mimic the actual transaction that might happen in your own applications. Other than this stack, I do have a material button that is outside the container, so when we click on this button, this container will get captured and the image will be uploaded to Firebase. Other than this UI here, I do have these assets imported into my application that is confetti.png and tick.png. And both these assets have also been declared in the pubspec.yml file right here. So this is just the UI base of the app and we have to implement the actual functionality now. So to implement the features, the first thing that we need to do is we need to wrap the container with a repaint boundary. And by this, we have essentially separated the render process of this container from the rest of the UI. The first thing that this repaint boundary requires is this key. And for the key, we need to create a global key for this my home page state. So I'll create the key here and I'll pass the same key as the key for the repaint boundary. Once this is done, we're ready to capture the view of the container. So for that, I'll just create a simple function here and I'll name this void convert widget to image. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. And in this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to use the key, that is the container key, and get the current context. And from this, I need to get the render object with a method find render object. And this will return us with a render repaint boundary. And I'll just name this render repaint boundary. And with the help of this render repaint boundary, we can simply get the image data. But for that, we have to import a package. So I'll go up here and I'll import dot UI and I'll name this UI. So the reason for naming this import is just to make it separate from the imports that come from material dot dart because we're going to use an image class that comes from dart UI but material dot dart also contains an image class. So I'll just come down here and I'll create an instance of UI dot image and I'll name this box image and put it equal to render repaint boundary dot to image and we'll pass in the pixel ratio that is going to be one. The reason why this is giving the error right now because this is actually returning a future. And this is the reason I have kept the function asynchronous. So in this case, I have to make this a wait. So essentially we'll be waiting until this render repaint boundary converts the view to an image. And you need to remember that this image class is not equal to the image widget that you use to display images in Flutter. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get the data from this image. For that, what we have to do is we have to create a byte data. I'll just name this byte data and put it equal to box image dot two byte data. And we need to pass in a format. And for the format, I'll use UI dot image byte format and we'll use the format of PNG. And this also returns us with a future. So we'll have to use a wait here. And once this is done, we need to convert this to an unsigned integer list, which can be done simply like this. And for the uint8 list, I need to import a Dart package called Dart typed data. Once this is done, we have actually converted the widget to an image and we have the data in the form of this unsigned integer list. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to upload this data to Firebase. And for that, we need to add the Firebase to our project. So I do have a test project called Flutter project right here. And what I will do is I'll add a new app. And this app is going to be of type Android. And here I need to pass in the package name. To get the package name, what we can do is we can go to this Android directory here and we can go to this app and build.gradle file. In this file, once we get to the default config section, you can get the package name from here. 
I'll just copy this. I'll come back to the console and paste this here. And I'll add a nickname for the app and I'll just name this Capture. Once this is done, we'll get a Google Services JSON file and we need to download this file. Once the download is complete, I'll just copy this file and come back to the project and I'll come to this app directory in Android and paste the file right here. I'll go back to the console and press on next and in this we have this Google Services class path. I'll just copy this and we need to add this path to the project level build file that is right here and I need to paste the class path right here. We need to go back to the console and copy this line right here and this time we need to go to this build.gradle file that is in the app directory and in this build.gradle file we need to go up here and here I need to paste the plugin. Once this is done we've almost added Firebase to our project. The last thing that we need to do is we need to come down here and here I need to set multidex enabled to true. Once all this is done we need to close the project and run the app again. Once the app starts, Firebase is added to our application. Once this is done, we need to add the Firebase storage package into our application. And the link of this package is in the description. We need to go to this install section right here and copy the dependency and paste it in the pubspec.yaml file under the dependencies section. And once it is pasted, you need to click on this package upgrade and wait for the application to build. Once this is done, we're ready to upload the image to Firebase Storage. For that, I'll just come back to this function that we have created and I'll just minimize the emulator. So we have to indicate the user that the image is being uploaded. For that, I'll just create a new boolean of loading and set it to false. And before starting the actual process of uploading the image, I'll set the boolean to true so that we can show the loading indicator to the user. To upload the image to Firebase Storage, we need to have an instance of storage reference. So I'll create an instance of storage reference and I'll just name this storage reference and put it equal to Firebase Storage dot reference. Once this is done, we can come down to this function and create a storage upload task. I'll just name this storage upload task and put it equal to storage reference. And here we need to pass the name that the image should have. And because each of the image should have a separate name, I'll just name this img underscore. I'll append this with date time dot now dot milliseconds since epoch. And in the end, I'll add dot png because we're going to upload the image in the format of png. I'll just bring this to the next line. And in the end, what I will do is I'll call the function of put data. And in here, I can pass in the data of u int 8 list that we have created here. Once this is done, we need to wait for the image to upload and we can detect the completion of the task by using storage upload task dot on complete. And this is going to return us with a future. So we'll use await. Since this is just a demonstration, I'll not actually check if the image was successfully uploaded or not. I'm just checking if the image upload is complete. And once the upload is complete, I'll set the state of loading to false. With this, the implementation of convert widget to image is complete and we can call this function in the material button right here. And we also need to create a loading indicator. And for that, we'll come back to the stack here. And after the column, I'll add a new child that will check if the loading is true. And if the loading is true, we'll show a center which has a child of circular progress indicator. And if the loading is false, we'll simply show an empty center. And what I will do now is I'll close the app and run the app again. So once the app starts, I can simply click on this share button and we can see a loading sign here. And once the loading completes, we can go to the Firebase storage and refresh the link and you can see an image right here. And if I open the image, you can see that we have captured the container and uploaded the image to Firebase. And because we're not using any authentication right here, you need to go to the project and go to the rules here under the storage and you need to set them to true. So I hope that you find this video useful and if you do, please hit the like button and the subscribe button for more Flutter videos coming your way on Retro Portal Studio. See you next time. Peace.